Hello and welcome back to the Beefy Tech channel. Today I have a 15 game benchmark with the RTX 4090 and the 7950 X3D. This video is more of a CPU test where we will see if the 7950 X3D is enough for 4090. So the tests were all conducted at 1440p. Do not waste any more time, all of my system specs including how I have set up the 7950 X3D will be in the description. The games I'll be testing will be up on screen now for all of you to see exactly what's coming up. For those that want to get into specific game results, timestamps are in the description. Let's get started. So for every single game I will always start with their settings as it's one of the most important things to be able to determine how the performance really is like and for you guys to be able to compare performance given you wanted to. Call of Duty is one of those few rare occasions where I will not be running Ultra and I'll be running optimized settings plus a config file which I'll make a video on later. Anyway, Let's go first to the benchmark results and see exactly how the 7950X3D performed. And as you can see, with my config file and my settings, the 7950X3D is averaging 476 FPS, allowing the 4090 to be the bottleneck here and achieve 340 average FPS for the benchmark. Not only that, but the 1% lows are quite great at 303. The performance of this CPU is stellar in Call of Duty, especially after I did the RAM tuning, and after I set it to prefer cache in the BIOS. That said, let's move on to some Ashika Island and uh, normal Almazra testing and see how it performs there too. And Ashika Island does indeed get really good frames that translate quite well from the benchmark. But what you'll notice is that depending on where you're on the map, your FPS will either be insane or ever so slightly lower. And that is at no fault of the system, it's just Call of Duty being insanely unoptimized and having huge frame variants around the map. Anyway, let's see how Almazra performed. Right off the bat, you can notice that the average frames on Almazra are lower than Ashika Island. And that's completely normal as Almazra has much more tech textures to load than Ashika Island does, but with that said, I'm happy with the results and the game felt perfectly smooth when I played it. Overall, the CPU is killer for Call of Duty. Moving on to PUBG, there's one important thing I need to mention. The game by default goes on DX11 and quite clearly, as you'll see in this benchmark, the 1% lows were absolutely atrocious and from what I research, it turns out that this game does indeed have a slight stuttering issue depending on which game engine you're using. I only tested DX11, so I'm not sure if DX11E and DX12, which are options in the settings, would perform better for those 1% lows. With that said, obviously the average FPS of 360 is too little and nowhere near enough, no I'm kidding, obviously. 360 FPS average is great, it's just that the 1% lows were not good as a result of that occasional stutter that the game had. As we move on to Apex, it is really important for me to mention that Apex has a hard cap at 240 FPS that you cannot remove through normal in-game settings, so I didn't. The reason I did this test is to demonstrate how easy it would be for the 7950X3D and the 4090 to achieve said 240 FPS. It's not a problem though, as anyway I've read that if you go above 240 with Apex through other means, the game becomes choppy. So, with that said, it runs perfectly smooth at 240 and uses about 50% of the RTX 4090. Battlefield 2042 is another one of those games that by default sets itself to DX11 despite having DX12 available, and that is clearly shown yet again as the 1% lows are atrocious and you could actually feel yet again an in-game stutter when running it like this. I do remember on some of my previous setups when I played Battlefield 2042 though, setting it to DX12 helped immensely, especially with the 1% lows. I did want to mention that if you don't want to have to enable DX12, just setting the settings to low helped the 1% lows in averages significantly and the game was much smoother already. Moving on to Rainbow Six Siege, I ran this game in Vulcan, and just to clear up, that is a game engine. As you can see, everything is set to 1440p Ultra over here. And I just have to say, it's one of those games that you include in a benchmark just to laugh at how ridiculously high the frames are. Because as you can see, the GPU is sitting around 90% usage, which is, by the way, higher than the 5800X3D. Spoiler alert, yet again, you know, the new one is faster, oh boy. But uh, it's one of those games where you're going to be getting incredible performance no matter what. Sorry for those 0.1% lows, I accidentally tabbed into MSI Afterburner and that kind of ruined that, but... Uh, 
With that said, the results for this benchmark are around 609 FPS, which is absolutely ridiculous. And that means you can essentially top out any monitor in the world with absolutely no issues. And in fact, even your 1% lows will be above it. I decided to run Rust at 1440p Ultra with a couple of custom settings, and I set VSync off with a max frame rate on 240. But I ran into a little bit of an issue. The server that I joined turns out to have had its own FPS limit in place and I have no idea why. I don't know if this was my mistake or indeed the server had an FPS limit, but as you can see, the FPS was at 100 consistently with a 1% lows of 90, meaning it was just frame capped, despite me clearly setting the frame cap in the settings to 240. As for why that is, I don't know, I'm not a Rust player, but regardless, it's running Rust with 25% GPU usage and 9% CPU usage, meaning it's having no issue, and if you were to remove the FPS cap, it would most likely get a butt fuckingly high amount of frames. Up next, we have Dying Light 2. I decided to use this as the game where I will test ray tracing, both for the 4090 and the 7950X 3D, as ray tracing can indeed be quite CPU intensive, but as you'll see in this test, they had no issue running high frames, and by they, I mean both the CPU and GPU. But you would have noticed something quite interesting by now. The CPU temps are at 64 degrees in this game, meanwhile you've seen them go up to 80 in some games. And I've now realized that whenever it's a CPU bottleneck, the CPU will boost to much higher frequencies and voltages to attempt to make up for that bottleneck, in turn resulting in higher CPU temperatures. But when it's a GPU bottleneck, as it is here, the temperatures are lower because it doesn't need as much voltage to hit that frequency which is very interesting behavior for the stock 7950X3D. Moving on to Sons of the Forest, I do have to say I'm quite impressed with the performance over here. Running an ultra preset 1440p with absolutely everything turned on except film grain and motion blur obviously, the game performs quite consistently. Albeit, it is theoretically a CPU bottleneck, at least at 1440p. Not a big one. Not that it really matters, to be entirely fair with you, when you're getting above 120 FPS and the average was more like 160, so all things considered, the game runs great. Theoretical CPU bottleneck, but it doesn't matter, it runs beautifully on this combo. Moving on to No Man's Sky, this is one of those games that if you haven't heard of or haven't played, I highly recommend. Thing is, it's a space exploration game with crafting, so just picture Minecraft, but with spaceships. Uh, to be entirely fair with you, this is one of those games that... Whenever you go between like the planet and the space, you will always get like a frame dip, like a lag. And I don't think I've seen a CPU that doesn't have that or a GPU that doesn't have the problem with that, but it's only because it has to procedurally load a planet. So all things considered, it's understandable, but funny story, 1440p Ultra, like within the planet's atmosphere, you're getting crazy good frame rates with this combo and you won't have any issue. Even on a game like this, that is significantly more demanding, especially when traveling between like the atmosphere and space. Up next, we have Far Cry 6, which is known to run extremely well on X3D CPUs. I went with the Ultra preset, turned off motion blur and increased the FOV as I do for every single game. And as you'll see within the sped up bench, I did actually get really solid frame rates with the average FPS being around 160 towards the end where you'll see the benchmark results. The 1% lows were also around 120 to 130 which is good because that means the game is buttery smooth and the 7950X 3D shines in games like this. And right before we get into the racing games, we have Phasmophobia. This game is one of my favorite games that I've sunk hundreds of hours in and I absolutely love it, but it's more of an honorable mention as it just runs well and it doesn't really matter as long as you have 60 FPS given it's a ghost finding game. But as you can see, this is more of an engine limited game, as even with the 7950X 3D it does not take much resources at all to run this game at really high frames on one of the most intensive maps in the entire game. That said, let's move on to racing games. The very first car game on the list is Need for Speed Unbound. I decided to go nuts the butts maxed out 1440p settings as this is how people would be playing this game anyway and the game runs beautifully to say the least. I have no issues with this performance and it does seem to be more engine limited in terms of FPS than it is actually limited by GPU or CPU to be entirely honest. When you're getting 160 to 180 frames in a card game it doesn't really matter anyway anymore. So all things considered the game runs great and you can most likely play this at 4K Ultra no problem. Up next, we have one of the most popular car games out there, Forza Horizon 5. This game is very fun to play and I've sunk about 200 hours into it. 
The testing we did here was at the extreme preset at 1440p just to see how bad the bottleneck is. And as you can see here towards at the end of the benchmark, it said it was using 90% of the GPU. But then the GPU limited percentage in the test results was 43 with the average achieved being 172. Then I decided to go into the actual game and test to see how the actual game would do. And as you can see, the GPU usage is at about 65 to 70 percent, even down to 62, as you can see. So, yes, theoretically, this game is indeed also CPU bottleneck, but it doesn't matter because it's Forza Horizon 5 and you're getting 180 plus FPS. So all things considered, this game runs beautifully. Moving on to the Crew 2, I've decided to include this game not because it's anything special, but just because I remember playing it when I was younger and I loved playing the shit out of it during class. With that said, as you can see, it uses nearly no resources to hit its FPS cap because yes, this is one of those games that for some reason added a 60 FPS cap. Makes it feel like a console port, but with that said, I'd be happy to let you guys know it's only using 40% of the GPU to get there, meaning it can most likely do 140 FPS at 1440p Ultra and it would have no issues, assuming there would be no FPS cap, but there is, so yeah. Luckily, our final game doesn't have an FPS cap and that will allow the 7950X 3D and the 4090 to truly shine. Check this out. And our final game of the day is a Cerro Corsa Competizione. Not gonna lie to you guys, I bought this game and then proceeded to never play it. So today, when I opened it up for the first time, I had a heart attack, seeing that it has more settings than all the other games put together. With that said, I left them completely stock and proceeded to just play the game to the best of my ability, given I did not even know the keybinds too well. And while my gameplay is definitely lacking, the FPS is not. With a very low amount of 340 average FPS, you have a lot of room to install mods or up the visual quality, lose up to 100 frames and still be perfectly fine in this game. So all things considered, this game is beautifully optimized and the 4090 and 7950X3D consider it a piece of cake. With that said guys, I've really enjoyed my time with the 7950X3D. The CPU is absolutely great for video editing and for gaming and I really have no complaints. I recommend that if you're gonna get a 7950X3D, that you tune the RAM timings and also set your CPU to prefer cache in the BIOS as it helps achieve the best performance in games consistently without having to disable a CCD. I have many plans for this channel and I'm excited to develop the content further with the addition of an Intel GPU test, more performance optimizing guides for Ryzen 7000 CPUs, and a Warzone 2 settings and configuration file that increases FPS by a lot. If you want to see more of my channel, hit the sub button and I'll keep tossing better and better content your way. Peace.